Now we will continue regarding the urinary system, the anatomical changes. There is renal hypertrophy, increase in the urinary or kidney size. Also, there is dilatation of the renal pelvis and calyces. This will predispose to stagnation of urine, pyelonephritis, in the presence of asymptomatic bacteria. The dilatation of the ureter up to 2 cm, this happens because of the compression of the gravid uterus and by the effect of a progesterone which induces muscle relaxation. So, due to the progesterone presence, there will be relaxation of the muscle and hence relaxation of the ureteric muscle muscular wall. And also the gravi, gra, growing uterus or gravid uterus, it compre, compress the ureters and causes hydroureter or hydronephrosis. In the hemodynamics changes and function of the kidneys, there is increased in the renal blood flow about 60 to 75 percent, increasing the glomerular filtration rate up to 50 percent. So the women usually presents with frequency. Serum creatinine and blood urea ureate level are decreased. Glycosuria can occur because of the exceeding the maximal tubular reabsorption capacity of the glucose and the increased glomerular filtration rate, so the renal threshold is exceeded for absor reabsorption of glucose. So we don't depend on the urine glucose for detecting diabetes in pregnancy. No increase in proteinuria. If you find proteinuria in urine or general urine examination, this is a pathological condition. It differs from the glucose. In the respiratory system, there is increase in the pulmonary blood flow, as we mentioned, with decrease in the pulmonary vascular resistance. There is increase in the tidal volume to cope with the increased requirement for oxygen. Chest circumfer circumference expands and it looks like barrel chest and this will increase the lung function with gas transfer and the slight increase in pressure of oxygen. Subcostal sub angle will increase in its dimensions and the transverse diameter of the chest will be much more. Pregnancy is a condition of chronic hyperventilation and this is progesterone induced. There is increase in the respiratory rate and hyperventilation and this is in order to increase exchange of oxygen to get more oxygen and get rid of the CO2. Respiratory rate is not changed but the ventilation is increased. Gas changes or exchange Hyperventilation, it will lead, as we mentioned, to decreasing the PCO2, that's to say more excretion of the uh, uh, CO2, with little alteration in the pH. There is increase in CO2 gradient between the fetus and the mother, so there is rapid transfusion or diffusion of the CO2 from the fetus to the mother, so hypoxia is less to happen in the fetus. In the digestive system, the stomach, there is a relaxation of the stomach muscle wall, so it causes delayed in the gastric emptying time. The women usually feel satiation and feel with nausea, vomiting, delayed in the uh, digestion of food. With gastroesophageal reflux due to esophageal dysmotility and relaxation of the esophageal uh, gastric sphincter. Gastric compression due to the enlarging uterus will decrease the sphincter tone. In the small bowel, the motility is de decreased due to the effect of progesterone, allowing for more efficient time for absorption of nutrient. So, there is delay in the motility of the intestine in order to permit more nutrient to be absorbed to be a fuel for the growing fetus. Large bowel, increased transit time, transit time allows more water and sodium absorption. For the liver size and histology, it is not changed. There is some spider and geomas and pulmonary edema due to elevation of estrogen level. 
Regarding the skeletal and postural system, Lord Roses of a pregnancy, you all know the pregnant posture body will have more Lord Roses in order to increase in the anterior convexity of the lumbar spine to preserve the center of gravity in order to have the balance in walking and standing. The ligaments of symphysis and sacroiliac joints and pelvic ligaments will be more loosened during pregnancy. This is due to the effect of relaxing. So it will allow the mobility of the joints and of the vertebrae to have this curvature. And this relaxing is secreted first from the uh, corpus luteum and then continue to be secreted from the placenta. Skin changes, we noted that there is hyperpigmentation of the skin, we call it clavasma, which is these changes, darkening colors and due to melatonin deposition is more on the face, on the around the nipples, in the linea nigra and uh, some areas in the body will be more darkened. And this is due to elevated ACTH and cortisol, which causes breakdown in connective tissue over stretching. And so citria also will be apparent. There is increased in the sweaty glands and sebaceous glands. The skin will be more oily. The citria in the abdomen, we call it citria gravidarum. And as we mentioned, darkening of the color of the linea nigra is more. For the delivery or parturition, it is a birth of the baby. Toward the end of the pregnancy, the uterus will start to have its excitability to deliver this baby. The mechanism responsible for initiation of labor is still unknown. Some say it's due to hormonal, others say it's due to mechanical. Strong uterine contraction develops ended by expulsion of the fetus. Theories for explanation the onset of uterine contraction could be hormonal, as we mentioned. There is increase in the estrogen to progesterone ratio near the end of the pregnancy. And the increase of secretion of oxytocin by the posterior pituitary glands. Studies noted these changes. Progesterone will inhibit uterine contraction and into increased during the whole pregnancy. But there is no evidence that this progesterone decreased near term while estrogen is causes sensitization of the uterine muscle and it makes it, make it more easily responding to stimuli like endogenous oxytocin or exogenous one but still no evidence of increase the level of estrogen prior to labor oxytocin can induce and augment labor so they may say that there is increase in the endogenous oxytocin will causes initiation of labor pain some says there are some changes or mechanism from the fetal side fetal adrenal glands may play part in the initiation of labor this is a theory this evidence that anencephalic babies or fetuses without a brain, so without a hypothalamus, without ACTH, without pituitary gland, has defective adrenal cortex, no cortisol. This pregnancy is usually prolonged. Increased oxytocin or increased cortisol or increased prostaglandins from fetal membrane could play a part for the initiation of labor. Prostaglandin presents in large amounts in the decidua of later pregnancy, and synthetic progesterones, a prostaglandin sorry, are used to induce labor when placed vaginally to stimulate uterine contraction. So, the decidua could secrete this prostaglandin near time of labor, and it will initiate labor. Others blame the mechanical factors. For example, stretching of the smooth muscle leads to increased reflex contractility. So contraction can be induced by the fetal movements. But the question is why the uterus remained quiescent during the whole pregnancy and did not contract only at the time of labor. Over distended use, some says that we noted that over distended uterus, there is increased risk of preterm delivery. 
For example, in polyhydramnia, those patients usually, or twin pregnancy, they, those patients usually de develop preterm delivery because of this overstretching. The rupture of the amniotic membrane stimulates uterine contraction, but labor can start even without rupture membrane. So this is with and this is against. The level of intracellular calcium ion when raised lead to stimulation of contraction. And this is the theory why we use calcium channel blockers as and beta adrenergic agonist to, as uh, tocolytics to relax uterine muscle. While prostaglandin and oxytocin causes elevation of the calcium ion, ion levels. The gap junction between myometrial cell increase in number and size near term which stimulated by prostaglandin. So this may explain the initiation of labor. The onset of parturition or labor is thought to be to depend on interaction between fetal tissue, membrane of the placenta, and maternal tissue, which is the decidua. Both contain increased amount of prostaglandins, and these prostaglandins can initiate labor by stimulating uterine contraction and partly by ripening of the cervix. The baby is delivered, and this process is called labor. And the contraction is called contraction of labor or labor contraction. And as we mentioned, these pain or contraction are painful, frequent, increase in frequency and intensity, and causes cervical dilatation. Labor contractions continue to occur by positive feedback mechanism when the uterine cervix is stretched by the fetal head and this will lead to more contraction of the uterus and increase the oxytocin endogenously from the posterior pituitary gland. And the oxytocin is a toco, toco um, um, as we mentioned, or as we said, um, it initiates uterine contraction and augments uterine contraction. And this picture shows to you the baby's has to the cervix, Hence, the cervical stretch will cause excitation more on the fundal contraction. Fundal contraction pushes down the baby again, and the cycle will continue till complete expulsion of the fetus. Regarding the breast changes and lactation, the breast enlarges in size early in pregnancy and becomes lobular in texture with dilated veins under the skin. The nipples will enlarge and becomes more darker in color and erectile. The areola is enlarged and become more dark with the growth of Montgomery tubercles, which is the sebaceous glands under the skin. The growth of the ductal system due to the role of estrogen, the placental estrogen causes the ductal system of the breast to grow more and more in the branches and the stroma increases in quantity with laying down of fat more. Development of the lobula, alveolar cyst system, which is due to progesterone effect and other hormones leading to the development of the alveoli and lobule with the secretory changes of the alveoli. Cholesterol is secreted from middle of pregnancy. The initiation of lactation, estrogen and progesterone causes breast growth but inhibit milk secretion. Therefore, no milk is produced or very less amount in whole pregnancy. Once the baby is born, there is decrease in estrogen progesterone in the body of the female, and so there is no inhibitory effect on the milk production, so the milk is excreted. The ejection or let down process in milk secretion, which is due to endogenous oxytocin, the milk is secreted continuously in the alveoli, but not flow easily into the ducts. It's kept in the alveolar system. Then, with suckling, there is neurogenic stimulation, and so there is myoepithelial uh, contraction of the ductal system in the nipples and causes more contraction ejection of the milk into the mouth of the fetus. And this is mainly due or under the effect of oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone secreted in the blood, reaching the breast, leading to contraction of these myoepithelial cells, which surround the alveolar and ductal system, causing ejection of the milk into the duct. 
and so the baby can get milk 30, 30 seconds after suckling to one minute. This picture shows you the uh, anatomical points of the breast. The endocrinological changes of a pregnancy will stop here.